Hi everyone and welcome back to the Organized Notebook. In this video, we wanted to show you how to build a simple timesheet using Notion and we'll also be incorporating automations in this. So whether you're a small business owner or just someone who likes to keep track of how much time they're spending on each task, this timesheet should be perfect for that. So let's dive right in. So the first thing you'll want to do is to go to an empty Notion page and we're going to title this timesheet. And let's go ahead and go to the top right hand corner and choose small text full width. And this is going to allow you to have way more space in the Notion page. And now let's add a cover photo and we're going to go to change cover and we'll go to Unsplash, which has a huge library of stock images. And let's find a yellow clock. And this should add something nice and bright to our page. And now let's get started with the main template. So for this timesheet, we're going to only have one central database. So we're going to type slash table and we'll choose table view for this and plus new database. And we're going to name this timesheet. And now we can start editing the properties of this timesheet. So instead of name, we're first going to change this into task. And we're going to remove the tags here, delete property. And now we're going to add two date properties. So we're going to search for date and we're going to name this the start time. And then we're going to add another date property, which is going to be the end time. So this is how you're going to be able to calculate your hours using the start time and end time. And in order to calculate that, we're going to be using a formula. So we're going to click the plus button here, look for formula, and we're going to edit the formula. And what we need to do in order to find the amount of time between two date properties is to use something called date between. So we're going to go to date between. We're going to put the end time first, and then we're going to put the start time next. And then now we're going to put what kind of whether it's minutes, hours, and so on in the next part. So we want this to be shown in minutes first, and we have to put this in quotations. And the reason why we do minutes and not hours is because if we do hours, it actually automatically rounds to the hours. So we need to do minutes and then we need to divide it by 60 to show the exact amount of hours in decimals. So now we can click done and we're going to rename this hours. And now let's test that this works correctly. So if we put a start time here and let's say we put the end time by going to include time here and then we choose one. So it should say one hour. And now let's say if we put 115, now it says 1.25. So it's working very correctly. And we want to make sure that we calculate the hours as a total at the end here. So we're just going to already click here and choose sum. So now what we're going to do is we're going to also add a status. So we're going to click the plus sign here and click status. And here we'll have not started in progress and done. And instead of in progress, we can change this into started. And now what we're going to do is actually add an automation. And before we get to automations, we just wanted to mention briefly that automations are only part of the plus plan with Notion. So you have to do the upgrade in order to be able to create automations. And if you're interested in that, we'll leave the link to that in the description below. And if you do decide to upgrade using our link, we may receive a small commission at no cost to you and it would greatly support us. So let's go ahead and click this button here for the automation. And in order to add an automation, you have to go here and then click plus new automation. And first you have to add a trigger. So what needs to happen before the second thing happens? And in this case, we want something to happen when we change the status. So if we go to add trigger and status, when the status is changed to started, we want to set the start time to now. So we're going to add the action, which is to set the start time to now and create. So now if we change this to started, it should add a start time over here. And it did. 
And the second automation we're going to make is for when the status changes to done, we want it to reflect in the end time. So we're going to go ahead and go to the automation here again and create another automation. And we're going to do plus add trigger and we're going to make the trigger status and we're going to go to complete. And we're going to add the action, which is that the, st the end time becomes now and we're going to create. So now after we start the task here, then we can end the task by clicking done and it should give us the end time and calculate it here. So this is a really good way to automate the start and end times. So let's also do one here just to test again and leave a little bit of time until the end the time would be different enough that the hours would reflect on it. And now for the timesheet, another thing you might want to add is something based on person. So if you're trying to track timesheets based on people, you can either go to person property and when you choose person property, you're going to have to make sure that that person is a part of your workspace in order to add them. If they, if you're just managing different people on your own, you could just do a multi-select, for example, and call this person. And let's say that you have someone named John and someone named Kate. And if you wanted to show John's hours and Kate's hours, you could go to the three dots here and you could group it by person and hide empty groups and you could see the totals for John and Kate in that this way as well. So if we put this back by going to group and we go to none, we're back to the same sheet. So now let's actually go back and test this status property. So we're going to go to done and let's see if it is reflected here and shown in the hours. So now we'll see that it is 0 0.01666. So it is working now and it has also added it to the total sum of the hours. So now our timesheet's working very well. And let's just fill in the task here. Task one, task two, task three. And now what we can do is that we can make the timesheet so that it gives you the totals per month. So now we're going to click this table and we're going to duplicate it. And we're going to name this by month. And now what we can do is we can go to the three dots here and we can group it by the end time. And we can date by month. And now what we can do is we can see that October 2023 has this many hours. So it's always going to show the monthly hours in this way. And you can also hide empty groups or going to group and then toggle hide empty groups. And you can also sort it by showing oldest or newest first. And in this case, we like to do newest so that we just see the newest on top. So this is a great way to see your timesheet by month. And if you wanted to further separate this monthly timesheet by person, for example, you could duplicate this. And we'll duplicate it one more time. And let's say you wanted to see John's monthly timesheet, then you could filter it by person and choose John and save for everyone. So you only see John's times. We could rename this John. And if you wanted to show it with only Kate, you could go here, rename, and you could put by month Kate. And you could go to filter, filter by person, and choose Kate. So this is a great way to manage timesheets of different people. And you can see your timesheet by month. And finally, the other thing you can do is actually just to hide this database title so that it looks a bit cleaner. And for that, you can go to the three dots here and go to layout and hide show database title. And you can do that for each of these just so that you hide the database title and make it just a tiny bit cleaner. So that's the basics of creating a timesheet using Notion. And we hope that this was useful for you. We'll leave the link to this template in the description below. 
And if you have any questions, comments, or anything that was confusing about what we talked about in the video, feel free to let us know, and we hope to see you in the next one.